Welcome back to the most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Burke and I have a few secrets that you guys don't know of. Did you know that a small part of my body is actually not real? You see it every time you watch one of these videos with me and I'll let you know what it is at the end of the video. But for now, we're talking about secrets that only the US president knows. There are certain things that the president gets told about when they're elected that the rest of us will simply never know in our lifetime. What kind of secrets? Well, you're about to find out with the top 10 secrets only the president knows. Starting off at number 10, now we have the nukes. This one should come as no surprise. The US president is always accompanied by a military aide who is holding what's known as the nuclear football, a black briefcase that contains the secret plans necessary for the president to launch a nuclear attack. This is needed for when the president is visiting a place with no US control room, such as a foreign country. The plans involve details of nuclear stockpiles, damage estimates, and how to launch a strike on anywhere in the world within just 30 minutes. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the personal lives of world leaders. In the past, it was common knowledge that the FBI would actually deliver presidents reports on the personal lives of other politicians or prominent Americans. They would contain really personal information. It seems that they don't do this anymore, but the CIA and NSA still regularly provide the White House with information on foreign leaders, politicians or business people. These contain everything from drug habits, financial problems, criminal links, family squabbles and even their sexual preferences. Is that all just part of a very full report or a little bit too much information? Next up at number 8 now we have conspiracy theories. There have been a lot of conspiracy theories about the US government over the years. There are two big examples that jump to mind. Roswell, where conspiracy theorists think that the US has covered up a UFO crash in New Mexico in 1947 and the JFK assassination where some people believe that foreign powers or even the US government itself killed President Kennedy. Whether or not conspiracy theories like this are actually true, the president will have access to the absolute final truth. When the JFK files were declassified in 2017, President Trump knew the contents of them ahead of the public release and urged for their release to help put the conspiracy theories to bed. But if you know conspiracy theories, that's not really how they work. Moving on to number 7 now, we have spy satellites. Spy satellites wouldn't be much good if everyone knew where they were in the sky. The President receives briefings on US spy satellites from the National Reconnaissance Office, an intelligence agency so secretive that nobody even knew it existed until 19 1992, 32 years after its creation. The president is told not only where the spy satellites and aircraft are, but also confidential information on their design. Experts estimate there could be up to 12 different types of stealth spy satellites and aircraft that the US has never publicly acknowledged. Coming in number 6 now, we have counter-terrorism reports. In an effort to stay one step ahead of terrorism, the US government must keep the information they have to as few people as possible. One of them is obviously the president. The president receives regular briefings on domestic terror threats and potential suspects. One famous example of this came after 9-11 when George Bush met every single morning with the FBI director to review what they called a threat matrix. Barack Obama set aside Tuesday afternoons to review unfolding investigations in what the White House referred to as Terror Tuesday. Not sure how I feel about that. Pretty dark joke. At number 5 now we have the secret law. This is the term used to describe directives the president signs that the rest of the world will never ever know about. One famous example came in 2015 when Barack Obama released a policy labelled as Directive Number 30. That was strange because the last directive he had signed was labelled as Number 28. So where was 29? Well that was considered a secret law. Presidents have done this before, sign off on a directive that the public will never know about. That's usually because they involve serious issues such as nuclear weapons, relationships with other countries or powers the presidents will have in the middle of a crisis. Next up number 4 now, we have secret agents. If everyone knew the location of US secret agents, it would kind of defeat their purpose. The president can request to know the details of secret agents, whether they be working on American soil or foreign countries, drug enforcement or counter-terrorism. This also includes non-Americans around the world who are being paid by the US for their services or cooperation. I used to be one of them, but then I thought I'd be a YouTube host instead. Change it up a bit. Coming at number 3 now, we have Directive 58. To put this one quite simply, Directive 58 is the plan for how the US presidency will survive the end of the world. It was devised in the wake of the Cold War when the US began to contemplate what life would be like if the country was hit by a nuclear strike. Directive 58 contains the plans for how a government would operate in that crisis. For example, 
if Washington DC was hit, government members would be relocated to a special facility on top of Mount Weather in Virginia. Also, it dictates what resources the government would need to rebuild itself after a nuclear war. Perhaps most importantly, it contains the plans for what to do if the president himself was killed in a nuclear attack. Next up, number two now, we have Beyond Top Secret. There's Secret, there's Top Secret, and then there's Beyond Top Secret. These are US operations that only a handful of people on the planet will ever know about. A new US president is then brought into that group after being sworn in. Sometimes the world learns about these so called special access programs a while after they take place. One example is when Obama was told of the joint US Israeli efforts to disable Iran's nuclear program through cyber attacks. Sometimes these operations aren't even conducted on perceived enemies of the US. The Edward Snowden leaks revealed that US intelligence regularly listens to telephone calls of foreign officials such as German leader Angela Merkel. And this is all information that the president would have access to. And finally at the number one spot now we have the kill list. This is a fairly new one. The president has the ability to sign off on strikes from drones run by the CIA and the Pentagon. Political assassinations are not okay but Barack Obama and George Bush used this power to kill suspected terrorists in countries such as Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, Iraq and Afghanistan. An added part of this is that the president can actually watch the drone strikes live. Apparently this was something that George Bush did regularly during morning intelligence briefings. Would you do that if you were the president or is that a little bit too much to stomach before lunch? Very interesting stuff I think either way. Hopefully that was enough details for you. It's difficult to get a lot of details on things as secretive as this. If anyone from the FBI, CIA or White House is watching this, make sure you leave a comment as something I missed out and I'll put it in part two. That would actually freak me out if that happened. Thanks for watching as always guys. I am Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>